Chapter 1351. It had been over 10 years since he had last been home, and he really missed his mother. His father had passed away when he was still very young, so his mother had been his only parent. Only when he embarked on the journey back home was his heart filled with guilt toward his mother. Back when he had become this monster, his mother had scolded him after learning that he had ingested insecticide to kill himself, and her words may have been harsh, but they came from a good place. However, he was unable to see through the hatred that had clouded his heart at the time, and abandoned her for over 10 years. He was a failure of a son, and he sorely regretted what he had done. He vowed to give his mother a good life when he returned. After displaying his power to the little girl, he was going to take his mother back to the academy, where she could live out the rest of her life in comfort. Finally, he returned home, and he was feeling very nervous. He didn't know if his mother would still be able to recognize him, or whether she would be willing to forgive him. However, when he saw his mother again, his blood immediately ran cold. His mother was living in an extremely dilapidated room. A swallowed little bed. What was even more alarming was that she was missing both of her legs and seemed to be on the brink of death. Tong Yu began sobbing uncontrollably at this point. When the little boy saw his mother again, she was already blind in nothing more than skin and bones. She had clung onto this torturous state for three whole years, and the only thing that kept her alive was the final ray of hope that her son would return to her. She wanted to touch her son's face and hear his voice one final time before she passed on. Mother, do you know how much remorse I felt at that moment? If I could go back in time, I would dedicate my entire life to no one but you. You are the one I owe the most in this world. Tong Yu fell to his knees as he spoke before cowing with all his might toward a certain direction. Tang Walin was unable to hold back his tears any longer. He couldn't help but recall the passing of his foster parents, and tears streamed down his face. He turned away and didn't dare to look at Tong Yu any longer, in fear that he would be unable to control his own emotions. Among the audience, a very large proportion of them had already been swayed by his grief. A child was always most reliant on their mother in the early stages of their development, but that reliance would fade as they aged, and they would gradually begin to consider their mother's feelings less and less. However, a mother would always love her child, regardless of whether that love and consideration was reciprocated. As they listened to Tong Yu's story, everyone was reminded of their own mother, and tears had welled up even in the eyes of Dai Tianling. The mother was ecstatic that her son had returned, but she could no longer see what he looked like. The little boy asked her what had happened to her legs and eyes, to which the mother replied in an indifferent manner that she had gone blind from excessive crying, while her legs had been broken by someone. However, none of that was important to her in contrast with the return of her son. The little boy asked her who it was that had broken her legs, but she refused to tell him. Her only hope was that he would always remain by her side and never leave again. The little boy agreed with tears streaming down his face, but his mother's condition was even worse than he had imagined. His return had satisfied his mother's final wish. And three days later, she relinquished the stubborn grasp she had maintained on her life. In that instant, the little boy had a complete mental breakdown. Never did he think that he would be returning just to see his mother one final time. During the final three days of her life, his mother had told him that she had never been disgusted by him. She had scolded him to try and snap him out of what was clearly an unhealthily obsessive fixation. After burying his mother, the little boy wanted to follow after her. He stayed in her room for an entire month, and after that month, he gradually returned to his senses. He suddenly recalled his mother's broken legs. The cause of her death was none other than those broken legs. They had taken away her ability to walk, thereby leading to the gradual deterioration of her health. She had told him that someone had broken her legs, which meant that someone was directly responsible for her death. Thus, he began to investigate who the culprit was. After gathering all the leads and evidence, he was faced with an incredible reality. The person who had broken his mother's legs was none other than the little girl, whom he once loved with all his heart and was willing to give up everything for. Following his disappearance, his mother had gone to the little girl repeatedly in the hope that she would know where the little boy had gone. The little girl humiliated her and shooed her away over and over again, but she continued to return. Finally, the little girl grew sick of her and brutally broke her legs before leaving her in the wilderness to fend for herself. If it weren't for the fact that she had been discovered and saved by a few kind-hearted individuals who just so happened to be passing by, she would have already been dead long ago. Never did the little boy think that his mother would have fallen into such a cruel fate. It was no wonder that she didn't want to tell us on the culprit. She didn't want the little boy to think that he had caused his own mother's death. Without his initial fixation on the little girl, none of this would have happened. If he had never left, perhaps this tragedy would have never taken place. At the height of his pain and despair, the little boy's heart was filled with hatred. He tracked down the little girl, who had married into an affluent family at this point. She was already married and had a son who was about seven or eight years old. When she saw the little boy again, she was still as cold as ever. She told him to piss off so that he wouldn't scare her son. The little boy interrogated her about why she had hurt his mother, only for her to respond with a cold sneer by saying that she thought his mother had already died long ago. She said that his mother was just like him, a dog who would never leave her alone, and that she had broken her legs so that she wouldn't be able to continue nagging her. In the face of the person who had murdered his mother, the little boy was finally unable to hold back any longer. He displayed his hyperdulo level powers to her. Never did he think that he would be displaying his powers to the little girl for revenge. The little girl's son looked on as the little boy broke her legs, then asked her whether she regretted what she had done. In response, she told him that she didn't. Even though the little boy had become extremely powerful, he was still a hideous mad dog. The little boy left. He didn't kill her as she hadn't killed his mother, either. However, the heavens seemed to have frowned down upon her, and she died from excessive blood loss before anyone could save her. Her son had witnessed the entire ordeal. That's right. That was the truth, one that was completely unexpected to everyone. Those who had denounced Tong Yu as a remorseless brazen criminal all felt as if lumps had appeared in their throats. If they had been in Tong Yu's shoes, would they have been able to hold back? Tong Yu took a deep breath before continuing. In the end, the little boy handed himself in. He didn't want to bring shame to his academy and to his teacher. He no longer had any reason for living, and he no longer cared if he lived or died. He didn't want to explain anything, and his heart was filled with remorse, both for the mother he had lost, and for the mother that he had deprived someone else of. In the eyes of that child, he was also a heinous man who had killed his mother. All he wanted was to die. At the very least, that would allow him to escape the agony in his heart. Chapter 1352 his teacher came. It was his teacher who saved him, but he was deprived of his suit of free wear battle armor and lived a life of imprisonment in the academy. In reality, he didn't want to continue living as there was no point for him. However, he gradually came to realize that he still had two wishes that he had yet to fulfill. He still recalled that the little girl had said that her future lover was going to stand at the pinnacle of this entire world. Even though she was already dead, he had to reach that pinnacle to prove that she had made the wrong choice. Hence, he began to cultivate with all his might from that day forth, and he finally reached that level after over 20 years. Today, he stands here before all of you. He had hoped to serve the empire with his powers, but he's unable to fulfill that wishes there's something more important that he must do, which is repent. I don't know if that child is watching this match. You should be well into adulthood at this point. Yes, I killed your mother. I apologize to you and repent with my life. I hope that my death can put your heart at ease. In order to repent, I'll also be leaving to you the essence that I've been cultivating all my life in the hope that it can assuage some of your pain. I don't expect you to forgive me. All I want to tell you is to discard the hatred in your heart and pursue the light. Tong Yu expelled a ball of five colored light out of his mouth as he spoke. This was a dazzling five colored bead, and it flew directly toward NC as a streak of red light. NC raised his hand to accept the bead, but he did so with a very strange expression. This was Tong Yu's five elemental killing bead, and it was the manifestation of all of the vital essence that Tong Yu had accumulated during his cultivation to the limit duo level. It was exactly because he had manifested this five elemental killing bead that he had displayed powers far below his normal standard, and failed to defend himself against Tang Wuling's final attack in the end. I'm sorry, teacher, I'm doing this today to tell everyone the truth. The Academy hasn't protected me
His life had turned out this way due to the heavy psychological blows he had received during his development, but at the same time, society was also to blame. That night, Dai Tianling immediately implemented a series of laws to minimize the instances of ordeals similar to the one that Tongyu's mother had suffered. On top of that, he made Tongyu the postmortem honorary master of the Imperial Holy Hall, and also granted him amnesty for the crime he had committed. His death was enough to repent for his crime, and at the same time, he had cleared the name of Monster Academy. The death of the limit Uluo was mourned by the entire empire, and the atmosphere of excitement in the trial of five gods had been replaced by one of oppression and grief. At the Star Luo Empire Tang Sect headquarters, at this point, night had already fallen, and stars littered the entire sky. Tang Wuling strode through a door and into a corridor. Rays of starlight were shining in through the window, and there were many people already waiting in the corridor. The most prominent figure among them was none other than the Holy Dragon Dulo, the principal of Monster Academy, Limit Dulo NC. As soon as Tang Wuling emerged, NC immediately rushed toward him in an urgent manner. What's the situation? He's in a stable condition. He possesses extraordinary life force, and I was able to cleanse all of the destructive power within his body. The rest will be up to him. He only managed to survive as he's a Limit Dulo. Otherwise, even a true deity most likely wouldn't be able to save him. NC heaved a long sigh of relief before appraising Tang Wuling with a complex look in his eyes. Thank you. I didn't think that something like this would happen. Who could have anticipated that he would resort to such extreme measures? Tang Wuling replied, If we want to truly cure him, I think we need to heal his psychological scars. I think we need to find the child of the woman that he once loved. If we don't do that, he'll most likely just end up creating another killing bead. Her Majesty, the Holy Spirit Duo, told me that if he were to do that again, even she wouldn't be able to save him. In reality, this killing bead is useless to the average person anyway. It contains his vital essence, which will immediately kill the person who tries to absorb it. A wry smile appeared on NC's face. He really is a stubborn child. I've already sent out some people to track down the son of that woman, but apparently, the entire family immigrated to the Duo continent, so it won't be easy to find them. Come to think of it, I'm partially to blame for this as well. I knew the truth behind this, and I was afraid that Tongu would resort to extreme measures, so I exerted pressure on that family and essentially forced them to leave the Star Luo continent. In reality, there were many more factors at play under the surface that led to that tragedy. The girl had lashed out against Tongyu's mother at the time because her husband had recently died in an accident, and she was in a very emotionally unstable state. The people who had saved Tongyu's mother after the incident had been sent by her as well, so she still had some kindness in her heart in the end. She had made a terrible mistake, but she shouldn't have had to lose her life for it. A wry smile also appeared on Tang Wuling's face. Most things are far more complex than they appear at first glance. In any case, I'm sure the killing Dulo will have learned a lesson from this and won't be as fixated on his past. I think you should tell him all of these things. As a limit Dulo who's been through so much, there shouldn't be anything that he can't handle. NC nodded in response. If you can survive this ordeal, then I'll be sure to tell him. Thank you very much for your generosity, Sect Master Tang. To be honest, our empire is going a little too far with this trial of five gods. Would you like the fourth match to be delayed for a day? After all, I'm sure this battle has been quite taxing for you as well. Tang Wuling shook his head with a smile. That's all right. This will be a valuable experience for me. I'm very much looking forward to facing you in the final match. It would be a great honor for me to be able to face a limit Dulo like you in an all-out battle. I don't fear defeat. I only wish to improve myself through these battles. Chapter 1353. NC cast a meaningful glance at him and he to fall on internal side. Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect were still far superior to Monster Academy in terms of cultivating talent. Only organizations with staggering foundations, such as Shrek Academy and the Tang Sect, could give rise to a freakish prodigy like Tang Wuling. Following the conclusion of that astonishing third match, Tang Wuling had brought the Holy Spirit Dulo to the scene. In terms of healing abilities, no one in the Star Luo Empire or even the entire Dulo Star could compare with her. The Holy Spirit Dulo had immediately repressed the dissipation of Tongyu's soul, forcing it to remain in his body before taking him directly back to the Tang Sect for treatment. Thankfully, all Limit Dulyoys had exceptional life force, so it was not that easy for them to die. On top of that, Tongyu was only around 70 years of age, which was a prime age for Limit Dulyoys where they were at the height of their life force. In that final instant during the match, Tang Wulin had held back with his right hand to prevent his own destructive aura from completely erupting within Tongyu's body. As such, Tongyu's life was saved, and during the process, that five elemental killing bead was also fused back into his body. Yali had borrowed a drop of Tang Wulin's blood to activate the divine beast killing bloodline within Tongyu's body, thereby kicking off the self-regeneration process. As for whether he would be able to make a full recovery, that would be decided during the next few days. I'll be taking my leave to prepare for tomorrow's match. Then, Your Majesty, Tang Wulin bade farewell to NC before returning to his own room. There wasn't enough time in what remained of the night for him to digest the benefits he had reached from his battle against Tongyu. His top priority now was to recover his peak physical condition for the fourth match. Among the three matches that had already passed, this third one was the one that he had benefited the most from. Even though Tongyu had been significantly weakened due to his manifestation of that killing bead, his battle experience and utilization of soul power were all on a limit Duo level. Otherwise, Tang Wuling wouldn't have had such a hard time battling a soul master who barely possessed type of Duo level powers. The battle had lasted around an hour, and he had completely exhausted himself in all aspects. In the end, he had only managed to secure victory as the killing Duo had run out of power, so he had been very fortunate. If the killing Duo had 40 minutes full power, Tang Wuling would have had no chance at all. A relatively uneventful night passed by, and by the next day, the battle that had taken place the day before had become the hot topic on everyone's lips. The name of killing Duo Tongyu had also spread throughout the entire Star Luo Empire. He wasn't a hero, nor was he a criminal. As was often the case in life, there were hidden circumstances behind many things. His story had drawn empathy and compassion from over 70% of all of the people who had witnessed it. As such, the special pardon that the Empire granted him was met with majority support. When everyone gradually began to calm down, they suddenly realized something. Over half of the trial of five gods had already passed, and Tang Wuling was yet to suffer a defeat. It was undoubtedly the case that the killing Dulo hadn't displayed true limit Dulo level power, but those who had watched the battle unanimously agreed that it had still been an extremely tense and fierce contest. During such a battle, Tang Wuling, who was only in his early twenties, had defeated the killing Dulo, which amounted to three consecutive victories for him to date. Who could have predicted this would happen prior to the commencement of the trial of five gods? In light of this, Dai Tianling found himself in a rather difficult position. The reality was that the Tang sect had already taken an unassailable lead, and as the emperor, the situation had become quite awkward for him. Tong Yu's name had become vastly renowned overnight due to his story. But Tang Wuling was now even more of a household name in the Star Luo Empire. On top of that, the support behind him was growing day by day. Everyone wanted to support a winner, and the fact that he had secured three consecutive victories perfectly captured the imaginations of the citizens of the Star Luo Empire, who revered individual heroism. The Tang sect master had everything: youth, power, status, wealth. He was virtually the epitome of perfection, and his allure was far too great for the female audience. Furthermore, that allure extended to women of all ages, not just those who were around his age. To all young people, a man like him was a perfect idol. During an analysis that was held following the battle, Dai Tianling discovered that the most replayed snippet of the third match wasn't the moment of Tong Yu's death. Instead, it was the scene of Tang Wuling with tears streaming down his face as he listened to Tong Yu's story. There were already female superfans who were swooning over his compassion, and were yelling to the world that the Tang sect master was still so handsome even with tears flowing down his face. There was also video footage that caught banners that read things such as Tang Wuling is my god. Being held up by spectators in the stands, if things were to
He was even thinking that if his daughter had acted more quickly, perhaps there would be a couple already. Perhaps it wouldn't be too preposterous to allow his daughter to become Tangle Wing's concubine. As soon as this thought sprang into his mind, he was struck by the urge to suck himself. She was an imperial princess. How could she resort to being someone's concubine? No, he had to bring Tangle Wing down a notch no matter what. Otherwise, the momentum that he was gathering would become far too great, and that would be to the Empire's detriment when they worked with the Tang sect in the future. What if all of the representatives for the Star Empire during the negotiations were fans of Tangle Wing? During these past few days, he had virtually become the idol of the entire Empire. He wasn't the only one who harbored mixed feelings about Tangle Wing. The same could be said about NC, Jang Yang, the smiling Galo, and many other people. It was undoubtedly the case that after coming to the Star Empire, Tangle Wing had made a name for himself in the shortest time possible, and proven to everyone that he was fit to represent the Tang sect. The influence of the Trial of Five Gods wasn't just limited to the Star Luo Empire. The effects were also felt in the Duluo Federation and Do Spirit Empire. Tang Walin had appeared before everyone in a completely unreserved manner, and just as the Holy Spirit Duluo had said, it was time for him to step up and prepare to gather all of Shrek Academy's allies under his banner. Chapter 1354. At the Spirit Pagoda headquarters of the Duluo Federation, Kiang Yu Dongfang sat on the main seat with a dark expression. How are we handling this PR crisis? Are there still any media outlets saying undesirable things about us? A middle-aged man seated near the rear of the conference chamber replied in a respectful manner. We've established control over all of the mainstream media outlets, but the Tangsex declaration of war was too abrupt, and we didn't anticipate the scope to which they infiltrated the media. Despite our best efforts, there's still a lot of negative press about us circulating among the general public. Furthermore, that's enough. Kiang Yu Dongfang cut him off in an abrupt manner. He had been under a lot of pressure of late. The Spirit Pagoda was currently extremely powerful and had many allies, but the problem was that the Tang sect was incriminating them by linking them to the Holy Spirit cult. The Holy Spirit cult had caused several major disasters in the Duo Federation, including the bombings of Shrek City and Heaven Do City. As such, the general public abhorred anything that had to do with the Holy Spirit cult. What was most damning to the Spirit Pagoda was that with the close ties that the Tang sect now shared with the Do Spirit Empire, they had obtained a lot of evidence from the Empire and exposed the underground facility beneath the Spirit Pagoda headquarters. The information had even been available for the public viewing for an entire day on the Star Battle Net before the Spirit Pagoda managed to remove it. As a result, many powers in the Federation, including some of the Spirit Pagoda's allies, had developed suspicions toward them. There was no way that any of their allies would accept their collaboration with the Holy Spirit cult. Hence, even with these lofty status in the Federation, Kiang Yu Dongfang was under immense pressure. This matter had to be addressed no matter what, but the problem was that the negative press only seemed to be gaining traction, and the Tang sect had played an important role in this. Even Kiang Yu Dongfang himself had become too complacent. Ever since the Tang sect had withdrawn into the underground world, it had become a shadow of its former self, and many people were drawn to the conclusion that it no longer had any substantial influence. As such, when the Tang sect secured all of this evidence and began their retaliation, the Spirit Pagoda was caught completely off guard. At the root of the matter, Tang Wulin was the one who had set things into motion. He had destroyed the Spirit Pagoda headquarters, as well as the long distance communication system in the headquarters. In the Do Spirit Empire, there weren't many pieces of technology that could facilitate intercontinental communication. As such, by the time the Spirit Pagoda managed to find a way to contact the Duluo Federation, three days had already passed. During those three days, the Tang sect had collected sufficient evidence. And that was why the Spirit Pagoda was in such a bad position. Kiang Yu Dongfang had appeared on multiple occasions to try and silence the negative press, and he had used many underhanded tactics to repress the situation. As such, they had managed to weather the storm, but during the span of just a single month, the Spirit Pagoda's reputation had been dealt a massive blow. In contrast, the Tang sect was displaying signs of making a resurgence and was beginning to appear to the general public again. At a time like this, the Spirit Pagoda didn't dare to do anything to the Tang sect in case they were to even further incriminate themselves. Thankfully, news arrived from the Star Luo Empire not long ago, stating that the new Tang sect master, Tang Wulin, was currently in the Star Luo Empire. Furthermore, he was participating in some kind of friendly tournament with the Star Luo Empire. This piece of news allowed Kiang Yu Dongfang to heave a sigh of relief, and he immediately began to manipulate the media to promote the story that the Tang sect and the Star Luo Empire were close allies. They accused the Tang sect of trying to harm the relationship between the Federation and the Spirit Pagoda for the benefit of the Star Luo Empire, and these stories greatly impacted the Tang sect as well. In order to prove the authenticity of the story, he had even secured footage of the Trial of Five Gods and was broadcasting them from television stations in the Federation. However, much to Kiang Yu Dongfang's surprise, following the broadcast of the first two matches, the support for the Tang sect grew even further, while the opposition against them was quelled significantly. The reason for this was very simple: the Tang sect had proclaimed that this was a sparring tournament between the Tang sect and the Star Luo Empire. Furthermore, they specified that this Trial of Five Gods had been held as Tang Wulin representing the Duluo Federation to challenge the Star Luo Empire. The Spirit Pagoda's influence was present over all three continents, and the same applied to the Tang sect as well. So why couldn't the new Tang sect master pay a visit to the Tang sect Star Luo Empire branches? Had Kiang Yu Dongfang never been to the Star Luo Empire in the past? Thus, the Tang sect had twisted the narrative and made this trial of five gods a matter of glory for the Federation. Tang Walin was opposing an entire empire on his own and secured two consecutive victories. The Duluo Federation didn't revere individual heroism as much as the Star Luo Empire did, but the general public still respected power. In particular, after they witnessed Tang Walin defeating the vice chairman of the Spirit Pagoda during the second match, the support had tilted overwhelmingly in the Tang sect's favor. Kiang Yu Dongfang had only assigned a task for his subordinates to broadcast the trial of five gods, and even he didn't know that Jiang Yang would be representing the Star Luo Empire during the second match. By the time he realized this, it was already too late. During that match, it was as if the Spirit Pagoda had given itself a vicious slap to the face, and the Tang sect certainly wasn't going to let that slide. They insulted the Spirit Pagoda, saying that the Tang sect was facing the Star Luo Empire for the glory of the Federation, whereas the Spirit Pagoda was representing the imperial family of the Star Luo Empire. If the Tang sect were colluding with the Star Luo Empire, then what about the Spirit Pagoda? What was even more infuriating to Kiang Yu Dongfang was that not only was Jiang Yang representing the Star Luo Empire, he had lost the match. The excuse could be made that Jiang Yang had chosen to participate in the match to avenge the Spirit Pagoda's Doe Spirit Empire headquarters, but he had completely disgraced the Spirit Pagoda by losing the match. On top of that, even his soul spirit had betrayed him. Jiang Yang was a rank 98 hyper duo, whereas Tang Wulin was only in his early 20s. How had he managed to lose? Kiang Yu Dongfang was greatly infuriated by Tang Wulin, but also completely astonished. As a result of his extraordinary feats, Tang Wulin was also rapidly making a reputation for himself in the Federation, and the Tang sect was steadily gaining more and more supporters. Of course, there was still much opposition against the Tang sect. After all, the Federation was preparing to declare war on the other two empires, yet the Tang sect had destroyed the Spirit Pagoda's Doe Spirit Empire headquarters, and their sect master was currently in the Star Luo Empire. There was definitely something going on behind the scenes. As such, both the Spirit Pagoda and the Tang sect were in some hot water, and they were busy addressing their respective crises. At the very least, it appeared on the surface that the Tang sect had gained the upper hand during this power struggle. Have you still not gathered information on that Tang Wulin? Kiang Yu Dongfang asked. Ling Yaoshi replied in an indifferent manner. I've already presented to you all of the information we have on him in our database. It's just that we never had much information on him to begin with. We know that he
The intercontinental pole was soon connected, and Gu Yuna's pleasant yet calm voice sounded from the other end. I heard you wanted to speak to me, Chairman. Kai Yang Dongfang's expression eased significantly upon hearing her voice. Have you grown acclimated to the conditions over there, Nana? All of the people present in the conference chamber were high-ranking members of the Spirit Pagoda, and it was very rare for them to see Kai Yang Dongfang putting on such a benevolent display. They all understood that Kai Yang Dongfang was putting on a display to show them just how important Gu Yuna was to him. Indeed, this Spirit Envoy was truly a freakish talent. Not only was she extremely powerful, her family had made many significant contributions to the Spirit Pagoda during the past few years. This was a mysterious and ancient family, and it was only with their assistance that the Spirit Pagoda had managed to devise a method for creating Black Soul Spirits. On top of that, they were able to do so while minimizing costs, and that had been a major contributing factor to the current lofty status of the Spirit Pagoda. Kai Yang Dongfang was encouraging his own grandson, Kai Yang Yu's Hangting, to pursue Gu Yuna, not just for her looks and powers. What was more important to him was gaining the support of Gu Yuna's family. Currently, the Spirit Pagoda was still collaborating with that family in the development of a very important project. As such, Gu Yuna held a very special status in the Spirit Pagoda, and in Kai Yang Dongfang's heart, even Lang Yao she ranked below her. Kai Yang Dongfang was hoping that Gu Yuna would marry Kai Yang Yu's Hangting, and that the two of them would inherit the Spirit Pagoda together to take it to greater heights. When that time came, he would focus all of his energy and attention on pursuing ascension to that higher world. I have, thank you for asking, Chairman, Gu Yuna replied. Nana, I'm sure you're aware of the current situation with the Tang sect in the Sao Luo Empire. Can you tell me anything about that Tang Wulin? I heard from your teacher that you used to be classmates with him, right? Gu Yuna was silent for a moment before replying. That's right, we used to be classmates, but we went our separate ways when he became part of Shrek's seven monsters while I joined the Spirit Pagoda. What kind of person is he? Do you know how he became the Tang sect master? Kai Yang Yu Dongfang asked. Gu Yuna replied, I don't know how he became the Tang sect master so quickly, either. He does indeed possess outstanding aptitude and natural leadership qualities, which is why he was able to become the leader of Shrek's seven monsters. I once fought alongside him in the Star Lua Empire, and he was always the true core of our team. He's very independent and likes to help others, but he's also very headstrong and resistant to taking in advice. I had lost contact with him following the Shrek City bombing, and this is the first time I've seen him since then. Kai Yang Yu Dongfang quickly latched onto the floor in Tang Wuling's personality that Gu Yuna had disclosed, which was his headstrong nature. As long as he had fallacies that could be exploited, it wouldn't be difficult to bring him down. Seeing as you two were former classmates, would you be able to take advantage of this opportunity to approach him and see if you can get some information out of him? Kao Dajer and Zhang Xin must have their considerations for making him the Tang sect master at such a young age, and we have to find out these reasons as soon as possible. I'm sure you're already aware the Tang sect has already declared war on us. Under these circumstances, we have to gather more information on them so we can formulate the best strategy to counter them. Gu Yuna faltered slightly upon hearing this. You want me to approach him? That's right. We haven't announced to the outside world that you're a spirit envoy, so he shouldn't be aware of your status. You can try to approach him, but make sure to prioritize your own safety above all else. Have you been watching the matches in the Trial of Five Gods? Gu Yuna replied, I have. He just won the third match not long ago. You should be able to see the footage soon. He won again? Is there no one with any semblance of competence in the entire Star Luo Empire? Kai Yang Dongfang's voice abruptly spiked up a few octaves, and his aura became noticeably more agitated as well. The Tang sure is innovative. They're piling pressure on us here in the Federation while promoting themselves in the Star Lua Empire. Humph. Even through the intercontinental communication system, Yu Yuna could sense Kai Yang Dongfang's powerful killing intent. All right, I'll try to approach him. Should I inform Vice Chairman Jiang of this? Kai Yang Dongfang replied, I'll notify him of this. He has truly disappointed me. Send me a report containing all of the information you have about Tang Wulin, and make it as detailed as possible. We're solely lacking in information about him at the moment. All right, Yu Yuna replied. Tongu opened his eyes in a disoriented manner to find nothing but darkness all around him. He tried to sense everything around him, but the only sensation he could feel was one of crippling feebleness. This type of feeling didn't seem to be death. As death had approached him back in the sports stadium, he had felt as if his consciousness were moving toward another world. His body was completely weightless, and there was no pain, nor any elation. However, at this moment, he was feeling completely feeble, and it was as if his body had lost all of its vitality. Could it be that he hadn't died? How could this be? At the time, his life force had clearly been completely exhausted. Thank you for your hard work yesterday, Your Majesty, Tang Wuling said to the hooded Holy Spirit Duo as they walked on the bustling streets of Heaven Do City. Yali smiled, and replied, As a healing system soul master, being able to help treat others gives me great pleasure. I'm very glad that I was able to help him. Tang Wuling said in a heartfelt manner, You really are the most kind person in the world. The Holy Spirit Duo had managed to drag the killing Duo back from the brink of death the day before. Without her, he'd be nothing more than a cold hard corpse at this point. A reminiscent look flashed through Yali's eyes. She could still remember that night, when she had been standing in his arms beside the Sea God's Lake. There are so many exceptional and beautiful women who love you. Why did you choose me? I chose you because you're the most kind woman in the world. I want to spend the rest of my life protecting and cherishing your purity and kindness. The Sea God's Lake isn't very big. It only has enough room for a single Sea God's Island. My heart isn't very big, either. It only has enough room for you. Tang Wulin could sense the sudden emotional fluctuations from the Holy Spirit Duo, and he turned to discover that a film of tears had appeared over her eyes. He realized that he must have triggered the recollection of a sad memory within her, and he wanted to say something in apology, but couldn't find the right words in the end. The Imperial Sports Stadium had been surrounded in a virtually airtight manner. The venue wasn't even open yet, but there was already an enormous crowd gathered outside. There was a staggering number of people holding banners that expressed their support of the Tang sect, and there were also some banners that were inscribed with the words Kilin Duo. It was quite clear that they had already forgiven him. Of course, in their hearts, he was also dead. NC had expressed an urge to hide the fact that Tongu was still alive from the general public. After all, he was a limit duo, and if a war were to break out, Tongu would be an invaluable secret trump card. As Tang Wulin and Yali passed through the crowd, all of the people before them automatically parted without even noticing it themselves. However, if one were to look down from a bird's eye perspective, they would see that the two of them weren't being impeded by the crowd at all, and nor did the people in the crowd realize that someone was gliding past them. You've improved further in the control over your own powers. Yali finally broke the silence again. I did indeed make some improvements, Tang Wulin replied in a truthful manner. Even though only three days had passed since the commencement of the trial of five gods, he could clearly sense that the rate at which he was integrating his own powers and abilities had been rapidly accelerating. As a result, he had finally integrated everything that he had gained from his recent breakthroughs, and his powers have been enhanced significantly. The Star Luo Empire has lost three consecutive matches already, so they're definitely going to throw a powerful opponent at you today. Look after yourself. Chapter 1356. During Tang Wulin's battle against the Keelin Duo, Yali had constantly been on standby, ready to swoop in should Tang Wulin have required her healing abilities. She was already prepared to intervene when the five elemental divine arrow had almost pierced through Tang Wulin's head, but everything had happened far too abruptly, and Tang Wulin had also reacted very quickly, so she didn't get a chance to intervene. During the rest of that battle, Yali had been thoroughly impressed. Her lover had been the most powerful being on the entire continent, and she had been with him for longer than everyone else, so she was very familiar with powerful beings who stood at the pinnacle of the world. In Tang Wulin, she could see the shadow of Yan Ming. In his youth, Yan Ming had also
Other limit Dilyways were over 100 years of age, even if they were to step up, how long would they be around for? It was very difficult to see the future of the Tang Sect and Shrek Academy in any of them. The Tang Sect and Shrek Academy were still in a very perilous situation. At a time like this, these two major powers would only be able to make a resurgence if the younger generation could develop to fill the shoes of their predecessors. Hence, when the heartless Dilu discovered that Tang Wulin had been blessed by the plane, he immediately gave Tang Wulin his unreserved support. Among the younger generation, there was no better candidate than him to take up the mantle. As for the powerful beings of the older generation like them, their duty was to support and protect Tang Wulin with everything they had, no matter how bad of a state the Tang Sect and Shrek Academy were currently in. They still had three limit Dulu among their ranks. In terms of high-end defensive power, they went inferior even to the Spirit Pagoda and Holy Spirit Pop combined. Furthermore, Tang Wulin hadn't disappointed them either. Ever since he had become the Tang Sect master, he had developed at a rapid rate, as had his friends. Once they grew to fulfill their full potential, the Tang Sect and Shrek Academy would definitely be able to make a resurgence. No one knew what the situation was like in the Holy Spirit cult, but at the very least, there was no one in the younger generation of the Spirit Pagoda who could compare with Tang Wulin. During this recent period of time, Yali had constantly been with Tang Wulin, and she had witnessed how hard he had worked in his cultivation, as well as how he had taken care of the issues that had arisen before him. He had never disappointed her, even after the death of his parents. He had been able to recover very quickly and prioritize the bigger picture, and that was truly remarkable for someone of his age. Of course, she was unaware that Tang Wulin's foster parents hadn't actually passed away. Following these three consecutive victories, Tang Wulin was beginning to remind Yali more and more of Yanming. He was already beginning to glow, and someday, he was going to become the next Atlas Dulu to support both the Tang Sect and Shrek Academy. After making his way into the resting area, Tang Wulin immediately sat down, even though he had already done his best to rest and recover the night before. The third match had been an extremely grueling and taxing one for him. On top of that, he had to help with providing the killing Dulu, so even with his physical constitution, he had felt rather weary when he had woken up earlier in the morning. Yali strode over to him before placing her right hand gently onto his back, and a layer of gentle white light instantly enveloped his entire body. Tang Wulin felt as if he had been basked in a warm pool, and his soul power was rapidly recovering as if he had consumed some type of regenerative spirit item. All of the powers within his body were being organized and, and most importantly, he had entered a half asleep state that was very conducive to spirituality. Recovery. It truly was fantastic to have the Holy Spirit Dulu by his side. Diana had arrived at the sports stadium very early in the morning, and she was seated in a very discreet and secluded corner. She couldn't help but purse her lips at the sight of the bold banners that Tang Wulin's fangirls had written up for him. But at the same time, she became even more determined to implement her original plan. You're so handsome, Wulin. Even I'm becoming your fangirl. I'm not going to let you go. You delivered yourself right to my doorstep, so there's no chance I'm letting you get away. Humph. Diana's eyes began to glow at the thought of her plan. When the time came, even her father wouldn't be able to blame her. All she was praying for now was that Tang Wulin could continue to keep up his current miraculous streak. The more power he displayed, the less resistant Dai Tianling would be to her plan. She didn't care about anything else. All she wanted was to be with him. You have to win this weapons match, brother Wulin. That's right. The fourth match of the trial of five gods was the battle of weapons. The rules were as simple as ever. Both sides could use their soul power and physical powers, but all soul skills and soul spirits were strictly prohibited. Furthermore, the only weapons that could be used were those outside of the combatants' martial souls, and the inception of this type of battle that had stemmed back from ancient times. Prior to the invention of soul tools, there were many types of soul masters, and they were split up into two different major categories: battle soul masters and tool soul masters. As the name suggested, battle soul masters honed all of their abilities for the purpose of battle. Most of them had martial souls that were suited to battle and possessed powerful offensive soul skills. In contrast, tool soul masters were more suited to complementing others, but that didn't mean that they didn't want to be able to battle as well. Their martial souls were all suited for battle. Examples of this were food system soul masters and support system soul masters. Hence, if they wanted to battle, then they had to rely on external help, which was where weapons came in. Generally, it wasn't common for support system soul masters to use weapons for battle, but it was still a viable option. In fact, this was a major factor behind the initial rise of the Tang Sect. The Tang Sect was able to produce hidden weapons that could bestow offensive power upon support system soul masters and even ordinary people. Conversely, the decline of the Tang Sect around 10,000 years ago was a result of the emergence of soul tools, which have replaced its hidden weapons. Thankfully, the Spirit Ice Dulu and his friends had reconstructed the Tang Sect and integrated soul tools with the Tang Sect's hidden weapons, thereby giving rise to the resurgence of the Tang Sect. The Battle of Weapons was one of the less important matches of the Trial of Five Gods, but this was still the Trial of Five Gods. After all, who was going to represent the Star Luo Empire, and what kind of weapon was he going to use? Tang Wulin actually had a great deal of confidence in this match as he possessed a pair of divine weapons. His Golden Dragon Spear and Dragon Slaying Saber were undoubtedly going to be invaluable assets during this battle, and he also had the spear techniques bestowed upon him by his father, as well as his immense reserves of strength and soul power to rely on. As such, this was actually the match that Tang Wulin had the most confidence in among all of the matches of the Trial of Five Gods. Chapter 1357. Of course, all confidence was relative. No matter how confident Tang Wulin was, he didn't dare to say that he would definitely be able to defeat his opponent for today. With the three consecutive victories he had already chalked up, the Star Luo Empire was definitely going to bring out the most powerful opponent to cut his streak short in this fourth match. Diana cast her gaze toward the rostrum and wondered to herself who was going to be representing the Empire in this match. Even as the princess, this information was unavailable to her. Apparently, Dai Tianling had stayed up very late the night before to discuss this matter with NC. In any case, she was confident that Tang Wulin would win. At this point, her confidence in Tang Wulin was virtually blind and absolute. She was sure that Tang Wulin would be able to overcome any obstacle that stood in his way. Dai Tianling only arrived at the sports stadium when there were only ten minutes left until the commencement of the match, and this was the latest that he had arrived for any of the four matches. He had indeed stayed up very late the night before, and it was truly because the Empire couldn't afford to lose any more. No one could have foreseen that the Empire would lose three consecutive matches, and the powers displayed by Tang Wulin had astonished everyone. But even so, he shouldn't have been able to win three consecutive matches. Jiang Diang and Tong Yu's defeats could be attributed to extraordinary circumstances, but Huang Sangyang had lost the first mecha battle purely because he didn't know enough about Tang Wulin and had underestimated him. At the time, Dai Tianling had chosen Huang Sangyang as opposed to some other mecha pilot with greater combat prowess as he didn't want to embarrass the Tang Sect by crushing Tang Wulin. However, the Empire was now the one that was being thoroughly embarrassed instead, and as the one who had instigated this entire event, Dai Tianling was truly regretting his decision. As such, he had to ensure that the Empire won this match and recovered some of its dignity no matter what. He wasn't concerned about the final battle armor battle. There was no chance that Tang Wulin would be able to defeat NC, and even though there was no glory in sending out a limit Dulu to defeat Tang Wulin, he had no choice. NC was a limit Dulu a four-word battle armor master, which meant that he stood at the pinnacle of this world among a very exclusive group of powerful beings. No matter how powerful Tang Wulin was, there was still a massive gulf between them. He was going to make sure that Tang Wulin was crushed in the final two matches. Thinking back to the decision that he had made the night before, a faint smile appeared on Dai Tianling's face. Of course, this was a rather sinister smile. Even he felt himself to be a little sly and underhanded, but he had no other choice. Of course, he didn't actually resent Tang Wulin. Instead, as the trial of five gods progressed, he was becoming more and more fond of Tang Wulin. The news
become one of the powerful beings who stood at the pinnacle of this world. If that plan could come into fruition, the overall power of the Starlur Empire would definitely be significantly enhanced, and he wouldn't have to worry about anything with two Limit Duluos protecting him. On top of that, Tongyu was a lot younger than NC. With the life force of a Limit Duluo, he would be able to support the Empire for at least half a century. The final result of the trial of five gods was going to be three to two in Tang Wuling's favor. He didn't want to accept this outcome, but at this point, he had no choice. There was no alternative for the Empire but to agree to the Tang Sex conditions, but at the very least, if Tang Wuling couldn't secure the victory in the trial of five gods, the Empire would be able to save some money. After that, he would have to think of some ways to appease the Tang Sect and improve the relationship between Sect and Empire. This Tang Wuling truly had an immeasurable future ahead of him, if only Tang Wuling really were his son in law. With that in mind, Da Yuna's proposal suddenly sprang into his mind again, and his mood was immediately soured. Why was Tang Wuling such a stubborn brat? At this point, there was not a single empty seat to be seen in the sports stadiums, and everyone was spiritedly discussing the upcoming match. Every single match of the trial of five gods thus far had been extremely spectacular, and even more importantly, the outrageously handsome Sect Master Tang had won three consecutive matches against all odds. He was beating an entire empire on his own. Who wouldn't want a chance to see a heroic figure like him in action? The Tang Sect had always kept a relatively low profile, even though they held a very lofty status in the Star Lua Empire and was vastly renowned among the general public. Very little was known about its Sect Master. In fact, very few even knew who the former Sect Master prior to Tang Wuling was. In contrast, this new Tang Sect Master has chosen to appear before the Star Lua Empire in such an emphatic fashion. In the eyes of the general public, this was an effort that was being made by the Tang Sect Master to forge stronger relations with the Empire. The Tang Sect was an ally to the Star Lua Empire, and the Star Lua Empire had also always viewed the Tang Sect as an important collaborative partner. As such, Tang Wuling's perceived efforts to further strengthen the relationship between Sect and Empire only served to further enhance his popularity among the general public. NC arrived slightly later than Dai Tianling. Dai Tianling turned to NC with a smile and asked, Has everything been taken care of, teacher? He was in very high spirits as the Empire now had an additional limit Duluo. Rest assured, your majesty, everything has been taken care of. Dai Tianling turned to the smiling Duluo, who had arrived earlier than both him and NC, and said, There's no need for you to ask teacher about Tang Wuling's chances in this match. I can tell you that it's next to impossible for him to win. If I had to give a number, then I'd say that we have an approximate 95% chance of winning this match. The smiling Duluo raised an eyebrow upon hearing this. You sound very confident, your majesty. He couldn't help but wonder what gave Dai Tianling so much confidence. He clearly recalled that prior to the first match of the Trial of Five Gods, Tang Wuling had told him that the weapons match was the one that he was most confident in. Based on what he had learned about Tang Wuling during these past few days, he knew that this young sex master of theirs definitely wouldn't make faceless statements like this. Dai Tianling smiled and said, I am indeed quite confident. Your sex master has already won three matches. There were some extraordinary circumstances involved, particularly in yesterday's match, but the fact of the matter is that he secured three consecutive victories. Even if he loses the final two matches, we're still willing to accept the terms proposed by the Tang Sect, but a 10% price reduction will have to be provided. The smiling Duluo was quite elated to hear this. Even though the price had gone down, the collaboration was finally in the bag. In reality, the Tang Sect's bottom line was far lower than this. By saying this, Dai Tianling was agreeing to comply with the Tang Sect's condition, which would prevent them from using the provided weapons in battle unless the situation demanded it. Chapter 1358. Thank you, your majesty, the smiling Duluo said in a genuine voice as he heaved an internal sigh of relief. A positive outcome had finally been reached. If Dai Tianling had continued to insist on opposing the Tang Sect's conditions, then the Tang Sect would have had no choice but to make concessions. After all, the Tang Sect's top priority was to prevent this war from taking place. Dai Tianling waved a hand and said, The power displayed by your Sect Master has already shown us that your Tang Sect will continue to be an important ally to our Star Lua Empire for at least the next century. While it was indeed true that an element of luck had been present in all three of the victories that Tang Wuling had secured, he was still only in his early twenties. With his incredible talent, what lofty heights will he scale to in the future? One had to realize that in the past twenty thousand years, the only two people who had reached the very pinnacle and ascended to become gods were from the Tang Sect. No one knew exactly how much power the Tang Sect had. One of the reasons that the Spirit Pagoda had targeted the Tang Sect was because they wanted the cult Notes left behind by the Tang Sect's forefathers, which Limit Duluo didn't want to take another step forward. Tang Wuling was so outstanding that even the Atlas Duluo couldn't compare with him at the same age. So who would dare to say that Tang Wuling didn't have a chance of reaching that level in the future? The founder of the Tang Sect, Tang San, had ascended to godhood and led two empires in battle against the Spirit Hall. He had faced the two gods of the Spirit Hall on his own and slain one of them while crippling the other. He was the one who had established the legend of Shrek's seven monsters. Then there was the founder of the Spirit Pagoda, Spirit Ice Duluo Huo Yuao. He had emerged when the Tang Sect was on the brink of fading away into a relic of the past and led it on a stunning resurgence. Even though he had founded the Spirit Pagoda, he never actually took control of the organization, choosing to remain in the Tang Sect for the most part instead. At the time, the Invincible Sun Moon Empire's army had reached the Star Luo Empire's border, but Huo Yuao had faced the entire army on his own and forced the ruler of the Sun Moon. Empire at the time to concede. On top of that, he vowed to protect the Star Luo Empire from the Sun Moon Empire for as long as he lived, and that gave the Star Luo Empire the chance to recuperate and survive. In a sense, it could be said that Dai Tianling was a descendant of the Spirit Ice Duluo. Both of the two most legendary figures in the history of the Duluo continent had extremely close ties with the Tang Sect, with Tang Wuling, who was currently besting an entire empire on his own, also following their footsteps. Even if there was only the slightest possibility of that happening, Dai Tianling didn't want to make Tang Wuling the Empire's enemy. Hence, he had made his intentions known prior to the commencement of the fourth match, and in reality, he had made this decision well in advance. Dai Tianling and NC also smiled at the sight of the relaxed smile that had appeared on the smiling Duluo's face. This was undoubtedly going to be the most relaxed they had been while spectating one of the matches of the Trial of Five Gods. At this point, Tang Wuling had already made his way to the entrance of the sports stadium, with the Holy Spirit Duluo's assistance. He could feel that he had returned to his top condition. This was a very wonderful feeling, and his three consecutive victories had instilled within him a lot of confidence and momentum. This was the match that he was most confident in, so he had to win. The battle against NC the following day would be a chance for him to fully express himself. He was going to face the almighty Limit Duluo with everything that he had. The gate up ahead was opened, and it was time to enter the stadium. Tang Wuling strayed out of the waiting area, and there was someone else who was also emerging through a gate on the other side of the venue. In the instant that the two of them made their way into the sports stadium, deafening cheers immediately rang out, and countless people were chanting Tang Wuling's name. A faint smile appeared on Tang Wuling's face as he raised a hand to acknowledge the spectators, and right at this moment, the announcer's voice rang out. The fourth match of the trial of five gods will be the weapons battle. The representative of our Star Luo Empire will be the weaponry master, Weeping Blood Duluo Chutianj. Weeping Blood Duluo Chutianj. This was a name that was both familiar yet also alien to Tang Wuling. He had heard the smiling Duluo mention this name in the past, which meant that his opponent wasn't a surprise. Information about his opponent quickly began to surface in Tang Wuling's mind. Weeping Blood Duluo Chutianj possessed the Weeping Blood Sword Martial Soul. He was an exceptional swordsman and had already attained a sword soul. He was a hyper Duluo who was the chief priest of the Holy Hall. He had invented his own Weeping Blood Sword techniques and
would definitely be a sword, which meant that Tang Wulin would primarily have to be wary of his sword techniques. Chu Tian had been studying swordsmanship for over 70 years, and he was truly obsessed with the way of the sword. It was said that he had already begun to grasp sword essence. For those who were pursuing the way of the sword, sword intent, sword soul, and sword essence was the order of progression. Yi Zingling was currently already pursuing sword essence, but it would still take her a very long time to reach that level. Tang Wulin had attained a spear soul as well, but was also quite some way away from spear essence. This wasn't something that could be achieved through talent alone. It required sufficient time and deeper understanding of one's weapon. Due to the fact that this was a weapons battle, Chu Tian would be prohibited from using his weeping blood sword martial soul, so he'd have to use another weapon. However, Tang Wulin wasn't concerned even if his opponent were to use a divine weapon. After all, he had the golden dragon spear and dragon slaying saber, both of which were true divine weapons. Thus, Tang Wulin strode into the venue with an abundance of confidence in his heart. His opponent was a disheveled elderly man with messy hair and an unkempt beard. For this occasion, it seems that he had donned a set of new robes, which were rather antiquated in style. There were no embellishments on the entire azure robe, and it was a very mundane piece of clothing. Furthermore, his eyes were a little glazed over and completely devoid of the sharpness that one would expect from a master swordsman. However, this only made Tang Wulin more wary of his opponent. There was no aura to be detected from Chu Tian, which meant that he was already at a stage in his cultivation where he was able to completely subdue his own aura, thereby making him an even more formidable opponent. The smiling duel also had his gaze fixed on Chu Tian as the latter strode into the stadium. He had finally managed to correctly guess the representative for the Star Lua Empire. Chu Tian was indeed very powerful, but he was a rather eccentric character due to his obsession with swords. As such, he was most likely treating this as an opportunity to further hone his own swordsmanship. The fact that he wouldn't be able to use his weeping blood sword would severely restrict his powers, so Tang Wulin had a very good chance of winning this match. At the very least, he wouldn't lose too badly. In Hu Jie's eyes, the outcomes of the final two matches weren't all that important anymore. Even if Tang Wulin were to lose one or both matches, the Tang sect would only have to make a 10% price concession, which was well within the sex tolerance range. The research and development of soul tools was far more expensive than the material costs, and the Tang sect had already recovered those costs in their past collaborations with the Empire, so price was never an issue. Losing the final two matches wouldn't be of any detriment to the resounding reputation that Tang Wulin had already forged, so they were essentially completely inconsequential. As for the match that was going to be held the next day, Hu Jie could only curse NC for being a shameless old geezer. Holy Dragon Dulu NC was the undisputed most powerful being in the entire Star Lua Empire, so there certainly wasn't any glory to be had for him in victory. Begin. The fourth match of the Trial of Five Gods finally commenced, and the smiling Dulu suddenly discovered that the smile on Dai Tianling's face had become even more pronounced. In the face of Hu Jie's inquisitive gaze, Dai Tianling yawned and murmured to himself, "I stayed up way too late last night. It sure wasn't an easy task convincing the weeping blood Dulu to participate in this battle. Convince." Chu Tianch required convincing to participate in this match. A person as obsessed with honing his swordsmanship as Chu Tianch shouldn't require any convincing to participate in a battle. Could it be? A sense of foreboding suddenly welled up in the smiling Dulu's heart. There was definitely something wrong here. Chapter 1359. On the competition platform, Weeping Blood Dulu Chu Tianch was appraising Tang Wulin with his brows furrowed, looking rather unhappy and deflated. Is he trying to lull me into a false sense of security? Even as this thought occurred to him, Tang Wulin was already charging forward. He couldn't use his martial soul, but with the enhancements from his body sex congenital secret method and Golden Dragon King bloodline, he was still able to instantly break through. The sound barrier as he stomped his left foot onto the ground to propel himself forward like a cannonball. Golden light flashed in his right hand, and his golden dragon spear appeared. A loud dragon's roar rang out as countless spear projections erupted forth before hurtling toward Chu Tianch with fearsome might. Right at this moment, Chu Tianch suddenly raised his head and opened his mouth, seemingly to say something, but remained silent in the end. He then raised a hand, and as opposed to a sword as Tang Wulin had expected, what appeared in his hand was a metal bracelet instead. This was a white bracelet, and as soon as it was brought out, it began to emanate a radiant white light. An indescribable peculiar feeling also welled up in Tang Wulin's heart in that instant, and the golden dragon spear abruptly shuddered in his hand. It was then wrenched out of his grasp, and his fury of the masses was instantly cut off as well. A crisp clang rang out, and the golden dragon spear adhered itself to the white metal bracelet that Chu Tianch was holding. Ever since Tang Wulin had awakened his golden dragon king bloodline and obtained his golden dragon spear, it had virtually become a part of his body. He had suffered defeats in the past, but never had his golden dragon spear left his grasp in battle on an involuntary basis. Furthermore, it had left his grasp in such a perplexing manner. This was downright unimaginable to Tang Wulin. After the golden dragon spear was drawn to the metal bracelet, it began to slowly shrink before finally disappearing into the bracelet. The entire stadium fell silent upon seeing this, and all of the cheering spectators were completely flabbergasted. What was going on? What had just happened? The smiling Dulu was also rooted to his seat. There was no way that he could have anticipated something like this. Tang Wulin had been disarmed even before the first clash had taken place. How was he supposed to fight now? Tang Wulin had already reached his opponent at this point, but his weapon was gone. Chu Tian raised his right hand, and a peerlessly sharp sword projection swept toward Tang Wulin like lightning. Tang Wulin had been caught completely off guard, and he could only raise his arms to protect himself after losing his golden dragon spear. He only had time to unleash his mysterious jade hands to bolster his defenses before he was sent flying amid a loud boom. The attack appeared to have been quite a simple one, but the power imbued within the sword projection exploded seven times in rapid succession after crashing into Tang Wulin, with each explosion more powerful than the last one. The devastating sword threatened to tear his body into pieces, and if it weren't for his immensely powerful physical constitution, but attack alone would have been enough to end the battle. Golden light flashed over Tang Wulin's skin as he unleashed his dragon's repulse to nullify the attack, but he was still in a state of shock. The golden dragon spear was a divine weapon. It was something that was feared even by all abyssal creatures, yet it had been taken by his opponent just like that. What exactly was that metal bracelet? On the rostrum, the smiling Duluo had just figured out the answer to that question. He turned to Dai Tianling and exclaimed, Isn't that the Empire's premier divine weapon, the Vajra bracelet? You're willing to go this far to win? This was downright cheating. The Vajra bracelet wasn't something that the Star Luo Empire had brought over from the Duluo continent. Instead, it had come from the current Star Luo continent. Back when the Star Luo Empire had mass migrated to this continent, they were naturally met by resistance from the natives here. All invasions incurred a cost. Even though the Star Luo Empire wasn't powerful enough to face the Duluo Federation at the time, it was a simple matter for them to take care of those natives. During the war between the two sides, one of the tribal leaders of the natives had used this Vajra bracelet to cause the Star Luo Empire army a great deal of trouble. The Vajra bracelet possessed the ability to devour all weapons, and it even worked on martial souls to a certain degree. There was a small space within the Vajra bracelet that was completely independent from the outside world, and at the time, the Star Luo Empire had seven titled Duluoys with tall martial souls, all of whom were severely weakened by this bracelet. In the end, the Star Luo Empire had defeated the natives through the power of their soul masters with beast martial souls. But they had still paid a heavy price during that war. Ever since the Empire obtained the Vajra bracelet, it had been revered as a prized treasure, and only the Emperor had the right to use it. However, with the advancement of soul technology, this divine tool was made rather redundant. This was because the space within it was limited, and it could only store the weapons that it devoured. It didn't have the ability to make the weapons undergo evolution or anything like that. According to the information they had
he would receive widespread criticism, but so what? This is the trial of five gods. If we bring out anything short of the best that we have to offer, it would be a gesture of disrespect to your sect master. The Vajra bracelet is a type of weapon, and there's no rule in the weapons battle stating that only a single weapon can be used. Hu Jie was suddenly struck by the revelation that Dai Tianling had a very punchable face. All of the spectators were also completely flabbergasted. Virtually none of them were aware of the existence of the Vajra bracelet, but it didn't take a genius to see that Tang Wulin was in a world of trouble. Without his weapon, how was he supposed to fight in the weapons battle? How could the Luo Empire representatives stoop to using such an underhanded tactic? Even if he were to win, there would be no glory to be earned. Tang Wulin didn't know whether he should laugh or cry. It seems that the Luo Empire really didn't want him to win any more matches. They were even stooping to such shady tactics. What exactly was that thing? However, just because he had been stripped of his golden dragon spear didn't mean that he was going to concede this match. He was still oblivious to the fact that Dai Tianling had already agreed to all of the Tang Sex conditions under a 10% price discount. Ever since he arrived in the Luo Empire, he had constantly been targeted by the Luo Empire. The trial of five gods had announced to the entire world that he was in the Luo Empire, thereby placing the Tang Sex under a lot of pressure in the Federation. Tang Wulin was forced to accept all of this as he had to look at the bigger picture. Thus, he decided to participate in this trial of five gods, but even in this completely unfair trial that was skewed heavily against his favor, they were still resorting to such underhanded tactics. At this point, even Tang Wulin couldn't help but feel enraged by the treatment he had received. As the flames of fury reignited in his heart, his expression only became calmer while his eyes became especially bright and piercing. You want to take away my golden dragon spear? Let's see what else you can take. Tang Wulin took a deep breath as a cold light appeared in his eyes, and a spindle-shaped streak of light suddenly appeared in front of him. Chapter 1360. Chu Tianj faltered slightly upon seeing this. What was that thing? It definitely wasn't a soul skill. As the Tang Sect master, there was no way that Tang Wuling would break the rules in such a blatant manner during such a prestigious event. If it went a martial soul or soul skill, then it had to be a weapon. What kind of weapon was this? It didn't seem to be a hidden weapon, nor one that could be used directly in battle. Just as Chu Tianj was looking on with a befuddled frown, two bursts of light suddenly flew out of the spindle-shaped object, then landed in Tang Wuling's hands. The two bursts of light were quite mundane in appearance to begin with, but as they were flying toward Tang Wuling's hands, they began to expand drastically in size. And in the blink of an eye, a pair of giant hammers had appeared in his grasp. For Shrek six monsters, these hammers were rather familiar. The two hammers were of a nondescript gray color, and the only thing noteworthy about them was their sheer size. Each hammer was around five meters in length, and the diameter of each hammer head was around two and a half meters. While holding the hammers, Tang Wuling had to angle them upward to prevent the heads of the hammers from falling onto the ground. As a master of weapons, Chu Tianj was stunned by the sight of this pair of massive hammers. At first glance, the two hammers seemed to be completely ordinary, but upon closer inspection, one would discover that the hammers were releasing a faint sheen that was pulsating gently as if it had a life of its own. The rhythmic expansion and contraction of the light was akin to the breathing of a living being. Could it be? An outrageous thought suddenly occurred to Chu Tianj, but before he had a chance to think about the matter in greater depth, Tang Wulin had already leapt up into the air. These hammers didn't belong to Tang Wulin. Instead, they were being used by Yuan and Yui in a Titan giant ape form. However, he was the one who had forged them, and the material used was heavy silver, a material that Tang Wulin was most familiar with and wasn't all that precious among uncommon metals. However, their sheer mass coupled with the material used ensured that they would be insanely heavy. Furthermore, this wasn't hundred refined or thousand refined heavy silver; it was soul refined heavy silver. Due to how familiar Tang Wulin was with heavy silver, soul refinement of this material had become completely effortless to him, and he had soul refined these hammers as part of his forging practice regimen. Even for an outstanding sage blacksmith like him, it had taken him quite a long time to soul refine these hammers, and only a super sect with as much wealth as the Tang sect did would be able to provide such a huge amount of heavy silver for him. Both of the hammers in Tang Wulin's hands weighed over a ton, with the one in his left hand weighing 1,335 kilograms, and the one in his right hand weighing 1,490 kilograms. One could only imagine just how much destructive power these two outrageously heavy hammers would be capable of unleashing. As the one who had forged these hammers, Tang Wulin had a spiritual connection with the soul refined metal, so the hammers would be 30% lighter for him. The hammers only possessed one special effect, pulverization. Tang Wulin leapt up into the air, and even with his pair of hammers that totaled close to three tons in weight, he managed to gain over 10 meters of elevation. He raised the hammers high above his own head, then sent them crashing down toward Chu Tianj like a pair of massive shooting stars. The female spectators present all looked on in a slightly slack jawed manner. In their eyes, Tang Wulin was outrageously handsome and an impeccably graceful gentleman. He fulfilled virtually all of the qualities that they desired in the opposite sex. He was handsome, well mannered, powerful, and resilient. But this current image of himself that he was displaying completely tipped their impression of him on its head. This was a peerlessly handsome man wielding a pair of hammers that were far larger than even his own body, and he had sprung up into the air before swinging the hammers down toward his opponent. The image wasn't exactly an extremely barbaric one, but it was certainly far from what everyone had come to expect of him. There was only a single fangirl sitting in a certain corner of the sports stadium with her eyes glowing as she murmured to herself, "That's so badass." Brother Wuling really is the best. Chu Tianj was in quite a foul mood. As a weapons master, it had been very disgruntling to have been forced to virtually cheat by using this badger bracelet. He was very disappointed that he couldn't face Tang Wuling in a fair battle, but all this disappointment was instantly replaced by astonishment at the sight of the scenes unfolding before his eyes. He had just stripped Tang Wuling of that powerful golden spear, yet he was now using this pair of giant hammers. What exactly was his true weapon supposed to be? Also, how was that spindle-shaped object able to contain such a pair of enormous hammers? As soon as these thoughts sprang into his mind, he felt a gust of fierce wind sweep toward him. The soul refined heavy silver hammers were extremely heavy to begin with, and they were being swung with Tang Wuling's insane strength. Even before they had struck their target, the ground was already beginning to cave in the face of the fearsome aura that the hammers were giving off. There was no way that Chu Tianj was going to engage those hammers in a direct clash. He was a swordsman, and even though he had a significant cultivation rank advantage, he certainly didn't dare to fight fire with fire while being attacked by those weapons that clearly weren't meant to be used by a human. He quickly rushed back in retreat in an attempt to evade Tang Wuling's attack, but Tang Wuling was faster than he had anticipated, and even as his hammers were crashing down from above, he was still able to shoot forward to catch up to Chu Tianj. Love dub, love dub, love dub. A powerful heartbeat rang out across the entire venue. With the protective barrier in place over the competition platform, the spectators couldn't feel anything, but Chu Tianj's body noticeably faltered as his blood essence churned violently. Was this a body sex cultivation method? Right as this thought was formulated in his mind, Tang Wuling's hammers had already arrived. Chu Tianj had no choice but to grit his teeth and raise his Vajra bracelet high up into the air before injecting his soul power into it. Clang! The hammer in Tang Wuling's left hand was wrenched out of his grasp and drawn to the Vajra bracelet. The most fearsome thing about this divine tool was that it was able to devour all weapons, regardless of how powerful they were. Indeed, the Vajra bracelet had managed to wrench the hammer out of Tang Wuling's grasp, but it was unable to seal the hammer away. Instead, the massive hammer crashed straight down onto the ground while the other hammer was also upon him. Even the Vajra bracelet had its limits. Just like a storage cell tool, it had a tolerance limit for the weight or mass of the weapons that it could seal away. If those limits were exceeded, then it would fail to seal the weapon away, and it was quite clear that Tang Wuling's hammers had reached that limit. As such,